call the uh, meeting of the Board of Abatement to order at 6.56 p.m. I again apologize to everyone who was uh, expecting the meeting to start earlier. Our technical difficulties got in the way of uh, finishing our special council meeting as early as we had hoped. Um, as I've said at the beginning of previous meetings, um, most of the uh, requests for ab abatement that we've uh, been hearing have uh, related to damage to property due to the flood in July. And uh, we've worked up a series of questions that, that I'll ask everybody. I will uh, right now admit into evidence all the written submissions that, uh, that people requesting abatements uh, have filed with the, with the clerk. And what we'll do is we'll go through the, uh, through the evidence you have uh, to give us. We will um, hear that evidence. And then at the end of the process, which is going to be later this month, we will be uh, entering into a deliberative session and uh, discussing all the abate, all the flood-related abatement requests at the same time. And the reason for that is so that uh, we can be fair and consistent in applying the uh, criteria for abatement. And so you won't be getting a decision tonight, but you will be getting a decision uh, before the end of the month is our intention. And I think that's everything. Um, so Edward Haggett, you're up first. Why don't you come on, step, step up here, that end of the table, so you can be on camera and you can be on microphone and everyone can hear what you're going to have to say. Hello. Hello, Everybody, thanks for coming. Do you have a seat? This is, I have a seat? Yeah, have yeah, a seat right okay. there. Uh, no, wait, don't, you can move, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll make sure that you're facing the video to be on the screen. <laughs> All right. This is sure complicated. <laughs> yeah. So what's the procedure? Do I get to talk for a few minutes about yeah. my... Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and... And then we go talking. through the questions? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, so help me God. Okay, so I do. Yes. You're very good. Okay. All right. So this has been a long process. It's been a long seven months. It's been very, very difficult, as you probably all know. I have spoken to many of you. Everyone said I should have a, a visual. And I went through many visuals in my mind of what I could tell you. So I decided to take measure for my visual. That's the depth of my water, in, the water in my house. On the first floor. On the first floor, 59 inches. OK, I would have been up to here. Everything in my house was turned upside down. It was the weirdest thing. Stuff from one end of the house ended up in the other end of the house, and stuff from there ended up in the other end. So everything was floating, everything was covered with mud, and I mean mud. Um, so that's all I have for a visual. I, you know, what more can I say? I've said everything I can. I've worn my heart on my sleeve, and I'm really getting worn down and tired. Thank you. I, I appreciate what you've been through. Um, we have a set of questions that we're going to go over with you. The, the answers may be obvious to some of them, but I'll uh, try to make it as clean and fast as possible. And I have pictures, too. Or do a tour. We'll 
was there a 50 percent or greater loss of value to the primary? Yes, structure? I think it was 65, according to Mike uh, Miller's submission to me on substantially damaged. Okay. And was there a loss of use by the property owner for 60 days or more? I was, yes, I was instructed by city officials to close my house up for the winter. And was there a loss of access uh, to utilities for the primary structure on the property? I shut off the water um, because I didn't want it to freeze. And uh, I'd do have electricity if I need it. Water's still shut off, is that right? So it's been shut off for more than 60 days? Yes. Okay. Uh, was the property condemned? No. Um, I think those are all the questions I need to ask you. Uh, from what you said, uh, is your one, yours one of the properties that's uh, been designated as uh, substantially damaged? Yes, sir. Okay, that's what I thought. Is it, any other board members have any other questions? And you said that you have electricity now, but how, um, I assume you didn't get electricity back right away. How, how quickly did it come back? Well, <laughs> you're asking about my heat. So one of the things we need to establish is that you lost, um, access to your utilities for more than 60 days back and well on. yeah as far as my heating system or or, like or just electricity for running anything um, i have electricity so if i have to go down like december 18th right. we flooded again i had to pump out my basement yes i had electricity to run my sump pumps and but back in July, I assume that you didn't get electricity back right away. It probably no, took I, a while. No, I never lost you electricity. Never lost. Okay. I guess I wanted to add, to add, part of the reason you didn't lose electricity is because it, from the previous flood, you mitigated and moved your electricity. Yes, box. I moved my electricity upstairs on the first yes. floor, and I moved. I had an on-demand system for heat and hot water that I moved up. But I removed that from the house because I didn't want it to sit in the cold all winter. I just want people to know that, thank you. Uh, you said you had 59 inches of water on yes, the sir. first floor, so that didn't affect the electricity on the first floor? Well, I mean, everyone has something to tell you, okay? Experts say you have to replace all the wiring if it got wet. Do you have to? I don't know. I haven't replaced it yet. <laughs> Nor do I think I'm going to. His box is way up on the ceiling when you showed it to me. It was, it was two feet above the flood. Yeah. Yeah. Any other board member have any other questions? Okay. Okay. One more. Yeah. Do you, when do you expect to occupy Never. the house? OK. OK, and the reason being is when you're substantially damaged, you're required to raise, elevate the building two feet above, who, which hasn't been ter determined yet, the level of this current flood, two feet. I would want four feet above, but they say two feet. Or you demolish your building. That's your choice. So in my case, it would cost me between 180000 and 200000 to elevate, okay? I also got two quotes for uh, repairing the house. One quote was for 333000 and one quote, quote was for 288000 No way. In hell, am I going to put a half a million dollars in my property? I don't have it, number one. And even if I had it, I don't think I would. I mean, I don't have any, I mean, I don't know if I had to apply for buyout. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, it's, we have no answers, and nobody has, this is all new to people. 
uh, the people from Irene are all gone, and we have all new people who don't know what's going on. We have no, no answers. That's been the most frustrating thing is no answers. I know this is off the subject of the abatement, but I don't know what to say. And if you if people had a if you think insurance flood insurance is going to pay you, to, they are not. They only pay for the wet. They don't pay for the whole reno. Okay, so you you're going to get about a third of the money you need to repair from flood insurance companies. That's a fact. And we've heard that it takes years for FEMA to act on these applications. If you have flood insurance, FEMA's not even going to talk to you. No, but I mean on the on the other part of it, on the uh, on the buyout part, that it takes years for those. Uh, as I understand it, from Bill Bill Fraser's paper to Kitchell today, we don't want FEMA involved in the buyout process because you have to do a BCA or a ABC or. D, D, F, a cost analysis, okay? And if you don't meet, this is what happened in Waterbury. The, the buildings didn't meet the, the cost analysis and they were torn down. Or people just moved into them, it moved into them and said, screw you, I'm moving in. Okay, any board members have any other questions? Rosie? We don't have to ask the questions about outbuildings and other stuff that we normally well, the, yes, last time. I would I like that if this. it was asked. Okay, I'm looking at this, and it says, next question is, is the damage to land only, to outbuildings only, or both only? And I think oh, that's not clearly only, not the case. It, it's not applicable because... Well, there is damage. Damage to... Yes, you have an outbuilding also? Yes. A garage or shed uh, or something? There, there is a garage, but that's attached to the house, but I have another outbuilding, a okay. pretty big outbuilding. And is that also damaged? That was flooded, even though it was up, still got flooded. Uh -huh. um, and I mean, I haven't, I spent so much time this summer on the inside cleaning all the wet out. I didn't have help. It was me, my daughter, and my son-in-law cleaning the whole damn thing out. Um, I didn't have, I knew there was six, seven, eight inches of silt all in the backyard. My patio has, believe it or not, has a foot of silt. My little patio out my back door. So I really haven't had the really chance to assess how do I take care of that, how, you know, so yes. And the other one, none of, none of your property is a commercial property. No. Okay, all right. Thank you for coming in. We will get a decision to you. Thank you. Hope you like my problem. The bill passed today, so the threshold actually has passed is 60%. So instead we'll have to, 50. instead of 50. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. The bill is on the way to the governor's seat. Next up, Amy Herrick. Did you hear anything from Amy Herrick? Amy, Amy Herrick? I have not heard anything. Uh, she wasn't on the revised. Oh, okay. Oh, oh we're doing Okay. So, well, the revised one that we got. Right. You got a revised one yesterday. Right. yesterday. Yeah. It's just a substitution. Oh, okay. So who's next? Paul something, Paul Ducell. Come on up. Okay. I didn't bring a visual, but um, I'm not Wi-Fi visual because there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't have Wi-Fi here. Well, it's okay. Let's uh, let's uh, go and with. Have you introduce yourself. 
Um, I'm Paul Bézère. I'm a licensed clinical social worker working for Washington County Mental Health, which means I make less than $30 an hour. And I'm going to ask you again to raise your right hand. Oh. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. Could you spell your last name for us? B-E-Z-A-I-R-E-D-U-S-S-A-U-L-T. -S -S okay, thank you. Oh, okay. This is John's room. Sure. Mm -hmm. I saw him on. Is he passing this out? No. He's yeah, it came, came in. It came in. Oh, okay. Another one. There you go. Okay. But this is for this isn't for this one. Yes, it is. This is. Oh, I thought it was her. This no. Okay. Sorry, we're getting our paperwork in order. Oh, that's okay. This all yes. Came in late. Okay. Thanks. All right. So, why don't you? I'll, I'll go over the same questions that I asked of the previous person, but I'll also have you start uh, okay. Okay. by telling us what you've got going. Um. So, on July 10th, I um, I was at work kind of stuck there and was receiving pictures of my house. And I live, as you know, I live on Deerfield. Deerfield is off of Terrace, off of Hubbard Park. Not in a flood zone at all, in theory. And I started receiving uh, pictures from my neighbors of my house, which had become a peninsula, water everywhere. And um, so, positive side, is that um, the water that came in my house was off um, the water runoff from Hubbard Park. So it was clean water. Um, the negative part was that um, it came rushing in my lower level. It's a split level, no basement. So um, everything in my lower level um, was flooded. Um, and yeah, up to 12 to 8 to 12 inches, not 29 or 59, um, but enough to create enough damage um, to have to, destro to destroy all the floors, two feet of uh, walls. And um, seeing that I have three children living with me, um, we had to move everybody upstairs. One of my daughters was living in a shed for a while. It got a little chilly, eventually. Um, my other daughter moved upstairs in her brother's room. My son was living with me, which is another story. Um, so we had no flood insurance. Obviously, applied for FEMA, got FEMA funds, which was great, but um, nowhere near repairing everything. We still don't have any floors downstairs. Um, we're on concrete and um, just can't get ahead, <laughs> can't get to that. Um, that's where we're at at this point. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. Um, now I will go over this list of questions. The, the, uh, the space that you're talking about being flooded is, is that basement or is that It's the entire lower level. And is that basement space or ground floor living level living space? It's it's living space. It's uh -huh. two bedrooms, an office, a living room, a bathroom. Yeah. But it's, okay. But it's basement though, right? There's no basement. It's a slab. So it's where we were living. I don't. I I'm not sure. The question is kind of asked in a different way. It is the lowest level. Okay. But there's no basement, so it was all living space. Okay. Does that answer the question? I'm yeah. just looking at your record card here. And it's, it's below grade. It's below the surface. Yes. Okay. That's okay. That's basically what. Okay. And um, was there a 60% or greater loss in value of the primary structure? So how do I do that? I mean, I, I know that my whole lower level <laughs> was flooded. Is my house worth the same? Okay. Who gets to say that? Okay. I'm sorry, 50% did pass. Oh. I was mis misinformed. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks Gary. 
question is 50%, not 60%, but still. Right. I can tell you that half of my house was not habitable. Um, does that, like, okay. and that, you know, um, well, the whole like, garden was flooded. I couldn't mow my yard because it was a marsh for two, mm -hmm. three months. Um, no. Okay. It's, um, was there a, a use, loss of use of the uh, primary structure for 60 days or more? Um, well, we couldn't live downstairs, yes, I guess so. But you continued to occupy the Yes, building, we did. Not, I mean, okay. technically, FEMA gave us funds to move out, but where do we go? <laughs> uh -huh. If we go to the previous meeting, clearly there's no no rent in Montpelier in the middle of a flood to go move to. Yeah. Um, so. so you never vacated? We, we didn't. Gotcha. We just lived. Um, there was mold. Um, that was lovely. Um, yeah. OK. And was there a loss of uh, utilities to the home for uh, any period of time? Technically, no. Technically, no. Um, we had to make sure that you know the furnace was in OK shape, which that was iffy. It's working, but the plumber was not sure that. Um, and we did have electricity. I mean, we're so. If I don't, we're one of few houses that got flooded up there, there were three in a row, and that's probably for another meeting. Let's talk about culvert and the lip in the road. But um, so um, I'm, I'm forgetting where I was going. Right, so we still had electricity, everything was okay. Okay, yeah, my son was in that neighborhood, so. Uh, so so you, he might know that I'm one of the lucky ones that got flooded. Um, yeah. And the building was never condemned? No. And um, do, you have, do you have any outbuildings on the property? I do. Um, the chickens didn't like the flood, but I think it was fine. Um, and I have a little shed, which I think the water went under. It didn't seem to be. Well, my daughter lived in it after. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And is a portion of your property com in commercial use? No. Um, do any other members have any questions? Donna. I wondered if you had any uh, cost numbers on your repairs. Um, let's see. I received $11,000 from FEMA, which is, wow, super exciting, but goes really fast. So that was all gone. And um, I think we probably spent another $4,000 uh, on top of that. And now I finally got more FEMA funds, another 4200 to finish the floors. So I'm hoping, hoping to get ahead there. Well, ahead is just to get even that point. So I would say probably around to play it safe 15, let's just say 15 safely, mm -hmm. but probably closer between 15 and 20,000. Okay. And just curious, yeah. um, since it was your whole first floor, where was your furnace? There. On the first floor. Mm -hmm. uh, so it did get it? flooded between, you know, it did get flooded between what, eight to 12 inches? I think eight was yeah. The lower part of it. But it was yeah. repaired, not replaced. It was repaired, not replaced. Okay. And it's part of that 15. No, I mean, meaning the plumber checked on it. I okay. think he did a couple things on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's part of the 15 to 20. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sal then, Bob. Uh, so I'm a little curious about the layout of the house. Is it, uh, you described it as this split level, is it a sort of a walkout basement? I mean, you enter from the street and then it's not a walkout basement. No. It's, it's a, literally a split So level. walk in and split then you floor. go down, split floor. right? And then you have the garage and stairs and guess where the water came in. <laughs> okay, so it's a true split level. I think so. Mm -hmm. That's what it says on my on my tax bill, so um, I think, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> was your garage destroyed at all? My garage was flooded, um, not destroyed. So is it usable? Yeah. No. Okay. 
Yeah, it has everything that's not downstairs is now in the garage. Yeah. So the garage is a little higher up than the garage the stairs to the basement. Okay. Well, basement's not a basement. The so lower the water level is yeah. below the garage. Yes. Okay. The water all came in the garage, then down the stairs. How many? How far down? How far down? Or how many steps down is it from the garage to the lower level? Maybe six. Okay. That's a guess of it. Yeah. Try to. Fair enough. I'm kind of curious about something. I'm looking at the picture here, and I notice that there's a gutter going down the right side. Do you know if your perimeter drain, if it goes down into a perimeter drain around the house? I know that there was a French drain built. So when we pulled everything out, we figured out that the house had been flooded before I was there. So probably during Irene a little bit. Um, probably, what's the other one? I don't remember, whatever. Um, so. I know that the house had had water problems in the past past, and they had dug a French drain around the whole house. But no, and they didn't fix the perimeter drains properly, it sounds um, like. And there's a, a drain in <clears throat> my yard. Um, so I don't know about the perimeter drain. Okay. I don't know what that means. Okay. Anyone have any other questions? Rosie. So I'm just trying to figure out um, loss of use and uh, how, like, it so sounds like you're still waiting to repair the floors in the basement. Um, so you haven't been able to use the basement for the well, entire time to, since the flood? Or not the basement, the lower level, I'm sorry. Um, we had to fix the, um, I'm sorry, mold. Um, so we couldn't really use it downstairs for probably two months. Eventually, when it got cold, I had to bring my daughter in. And so right now, um, we were able to clean enough and close the walls in to have um, two of my children are in the basement. We were able to like paint the, the cement at least so it's clean in quotes. And um, so they're in the basement but the rest of the, the other floors are not finished. They're just cement, old tiles that we can't remove. And I have pictures. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Okay, as I said before, we will be discussing all of these at the end of the process and we will get the decision out to you. Thanks for coming in. All right, Daniel Kelly. Hmm. Let's see if he might be remote. I don't see Daniel Kelly, so let's skip over. Uh, and maybe the clerk can find out what have I don't, I don't want to deny or dismiss it without give, giving him a chance to let Fine. us know. Uh, Patrick Malone, him. Well, just thinking of Daniel Kelly, though, this is just a request for a personal, personal property problem. tax. Um, I don't know that it was certainly wiped out. Well, yeah, I, I think it should be wiped out. But, you know, this is the kind of thing that. Uh, even if we weren't doing this, this is the kind of thing that uh, that Bev would come to the board of civil uh, board of abatement and just say, "Here's a list of people where the pro personal property, you know, the business is gone, and so it should be abated." And so, if someone wants to make that motion, you could entertain that now, Rosie. I would make that motion based on the letter. I, I, okay. I think it's this. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Um, we had an issue I had with that one. We've never gotten um, a, an accurate inventory from that business. So my question to them was going to be to submit actual inventory. Um, it's had to be, we've had to guess what they have for property because they've never been forthcoming coming with their inventory. It's fine. Yeah. Do you have any? Yeah, I, yeah. I think I, that's where we are. 
But it's, it's the total of property total tax, property, whatever it personal is. Personal property tax. All right. Any, if, ready to vote on that? Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We did. Yeah. With the specific amount here of their tax bill. Yes, we guessed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 618. Okay. okay, Patrick Malone. Unfortunately, he can't make it tonight because he's in Florida, relaxing. So my name is Mike Foster. Um, I'm uh, Pat's uh, right hand, I guess. Okay, well, speaking of right hands, you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury. The best testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So do. All right. Why don't you so, tell us what I, we're talking about? Um, just to start, I gave you a package of papers there with all of the, of the information that we're going to talk about. I answered all the questions. But I came to last week's meeting, and there was a lot less of you. It's only brought seven copies, so I apologize. So I have all, I have the whole package. Have all seven. Okay. Well, I'll I'll send these around and I'll give one to the clerk, and the clerk can to make copies, make copies, and send copies out to the rest of the board. Yep. And can I get your name on those? I'm not saying. Wayne Foster. Foster. Thank you. Foster. And I'm not going to make you go over all the questions that. You've answered in writing, okay. but do you have any? Do you have some general comments or anything to add? Yes. Um, so the properties that we're talking about are 118 Main Street and Seven School Street, which is formerly the Hugo's Restaurant and um, BCLF that's located on Seven School Street because the building is one. Um, for tax map or tax zone. So. That being said, you know, we're pretty much at the hub of the, the flood. Um, we had roughly about 72 inches of water off uh, Main Street. So the uh, entire basement got flooded, which was a restaurant, a bar, um, two coolers down there, um, and a bunch of equipment. And then um, we had about 42 inches of water on the main floor, which is basically all uh, dining room, kitchen area, ADA bathrooms. So we lost you know, just about everything on that floor, including um, all the kitchen equipment. Um, there was four more coolers upstairs, freezers. The place had to be gutted to, you know, five feet above the floor. We took all the sheetrock insulation, flooring, you know, all the tables, um, built-in millwork, the bar that was downstairs, which I'm sure most of you probably sat at one time or another. Um, and then with uh, VCLF, you know, there was a, probably just under two feet of water in that one building. So again, we cut the sheetrock up three three feet, stripped all the insulation metal. All the doors were all, you know, uh, maple doors. So they all worked and came apart. So they all had to be replaced. So can you remind me what building BCLF is? So it's all one building, but oh. the entrance for uh, for VCLF is on Seventh School Street. Just okay, you, you know, just in, before the bridge. You go in uh, off the off the parking lot, or is it uh, no? So you know where the liquor store is, or, or TD Bank. For, for okay, so TD Bank's on the corner. Hugo's was on the other side of the um, liquor store, and Seventh School Street is on the other side of TD Bank. So it's a big L-shaped building. Okay, so that's where. Uh, Okay. Yeah, yes. Yep. So when we bought it, we separated it and rented part of it to Hugo's and the other part of it to VCLF. So all of the uh, um, heating units for the building 
which comprised of two big oil boilers. And we're also on um, the district heat for, for the, from the city. Um, so pretty much all of that equipment is, is lost, you know, so we can't repair it. So now we have to put it somewhere where it's going to be out of the floodplain. So, you know, we got to look at alternative sources of heat, which is either going to be, you know, heat pumps or put, trying to locate another boiler within the building somewhere without giving a ton of square footage. Um, and uh, and the electrical, you know, some of the electrical from the built for, from the built for the building was also located in the basement of uh, Hugo's. So right now we, you know, we we tore all that out of there. We haven't replaced it yet. Um, so again, that needs to be replaced to the somewhere out of the floodplain. Which is all detailed on that a page, you know, the pack, the package that I gave you. Board members have any questions? Um, you include some electricity bills here. Can you tell us so, why you included those? Yeah. So again, the uh, the um, the boilers and the heating for that basically the whole building on Hugo side is not there. So um, and a lot of the equipment from the district heat was ruined, the meters, you know, valves, a bunch of that stuff. So what we did at first is we put in some electric mode modding heaters. Okay. Okay. So the first bill is January, which is in the high two thousand dollar range. And then in Jan in uh, December, you know, our electric bill is over five thousand dollars. So being in the business, you know, we tried to do something with the district heat without having the equipment. So me and my plumbers went down there and we got pre-plumbed a few things so we could pull heat off the uh, the heat exchangers and put in some more um, hot water modines to try to help with our electric. So, you know, and, and we're already paying, you know, the usage charge for the district heat and everything. Anyway, so not only are we paying, you know, those high electric bills, we're paying eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars to the district heat for use just our usage charge. The question that only says they're looking for personal property, baby. I know that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, what, that's what I've got too. Is there is there a, are you looking for an additional abatement or is it just the personal property? No, the, the abatement is what you know is what I'm here for, but I was gonna bring up the personal property. The only thing I have is that Pat was looking for an abatement of the two hundred two hundred and sixty-eight dollars of personal property yeah. in the restaurant, like Forks and knives and spoons and stuff. Uh, I've been have been working with him for the last three days. And Does um can yeah. can so they, you know, that's me. yeah? What is the kind of can we have Lynn at the office send us what he's looking for because all oh, it just looks like it was a two hundred sixty eight dollar bean. That's all I have. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I just wasted four days. Wrong. No, this is very, this is very confusing because the request says. I would like to request a date of the $30,000 taxable value of the personal property, which was restaurant supplies and equipment that was destroyed in the July flood and has since all been discarded. And so there is a tax. Yeah. There's a deadline on when this is right. for abatement right. for the flood. So you can still request yeah. the rest of what you were just discussing, but we don't have, we don't have that, that request. Property. Yeah. yeah. Seems like sixty-one. Just ask five questions so we can get this set. Well, yeah, they're in here. So we're all set. Okay. But I apologize. But I'm like, no, that's okay. It's not not your fault. Uh, so we're looking for an abatement on that. So you could come you back and ask for an abatement on the whole shebang if you want to. I think what you should do is uh, is you and uh, Patrick Malone should be in touch with uh, with the city clerk to get 
a written request in for an abatement for the real estate taxes on the on the property. So I'll come back and do this all over again? No, because we've already got the information. Sure. I just want to add that in the so, file so we know what we're talking about. So what about the comparison of property? Because from here, at least we do it. I mean, basically, I it's the kitchen equipment. We've got, a, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Okay. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And this is for the entire bill. Any opposed? Yeah. Okay. The, so that grants the uh, abatement of the personal property tax, but that's only $268. That's obviously not what, what you're really here for. That wasn't one of us. Exactly. <laughs> so thanks for coming in. So much Pat understands when he's asking for this. We're, we're looking at the first two installments of this last year, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So it'd be that'd be the maximum I'd be. Right. You got all my information. So. Okay. He'll be back on Monday, so I'll let him deal with him. I'm John. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll talk to someone. Okay, great. Thank you. No, are you gonna have copies of the message from the news of, of the news stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're all going to email out, and I'll bring some extras. Okay. But no, email no, is the best way. Oh, of okay, okay. come on up and fly up to where you were. Yeah. Oh, his stuff that was just handed out. Yeah, I've got that. I've got that to scan. Well, we're the only two features. I do. Tell us what you're here for. My name is Brian Moody, and I'm here. Basically representing my family, my mother Eleanor. She was elderly and can't make it. Actually, she turned 89 today. So we the house was built in 52. I believe my family bought it in 62. Has never seen water ever. And unfortunately, we well, fortunately, it wasn't the river that got us, it was a, a culvert. I mean, it's, there's an eight foot culvert that comes under both interstates, goes through a brook across the meadow, which got filled in during Irene, to a 36 inch culvert that goes through under Route 2, which was half full of gravel. And it turned the brook and came down through and filled the, the basement, had six feet of water in it, finished basement. I didn't bring pictures. I figured you all have seen the huge piles of debris piled, and that, that's what we had. Um, we lost. A, a full finished basement with furnace, pellet stove, freezer, hot water heater, electric panel, you know, couches, the whole nine yards all gone. Um, I didn't lose a lot of time there only because I didn't have a choice but to get it up and running because where am I going to put my 89-year-old mom? There was just, just no choice. I got a used hot water heater and... I dried the electric panel out, probably not the greatest thing to do, but again, I didn't have a choice, which has since been moved up into the garage. Um, it's The current from the brook came in the bulkhead so hard that it broke the wooden stairs. And, and so I guess, I mean, I don't want to be here like I'm bashing public works or anybody, but I've been trying since this happened to get somebody to, to talk to me about this culvert. And I basically got told, well, that will be a FEMA thing. There's nothing we're going to do about it. Well, to me, a, a culvert can be fixed. The river is a much bigger problem. The culvert can be fixed. And I, and I honestly feel one of my big things of being here is it needs to be fixed because this, this last one, I, I have pictures on my phone. It created a, big pond and i i believe that i was within an hour of rain of getting the same thing again for a for a culvert um i know you, you uh you raised last year's appraisal we went up ninety six thousand and nine hundred dollars it went up and to me we've lost half of our square footage and are paying more um, it's just, it's unsustainable. We we can't do this again with the amount of taxes we're paying and the amount of, I mean, FEMA basically did nothing for us. I mean, the, you didn't get any money from nothing, that. nothing. I mean, frankly, maybe right or wrong. I didn't like their wording 
where I was obligated to buy something through them for the rest of my owning the property and whoever I decided to sell it to. Flood insurance. Yeah. Yeah, I just didn't like being told I had to buy through them. So what, what's their price going to be? What's it going to cover? And it just for pennies on the dollar, it made no sense to go that route. Mm -hmm. But financially, emotionally, physically, can, we just can't do this again. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just horrendous. I, I had, you, you know what a bag of pellets is? I had 79 bags of pellets still stored in the basement. You know what those do when they get wet? They're like 150 pounds per bag to get out of the basement. It was just, but like I say, fortunately, it wasn't a river. So we didn't have the huge amount of silt. So yeah, that's about my my story. One, one thing I can tell you, and I, I don't know whether the culvert is on that list, but the city has submitted a list of, of repairs or damages to city-owned property that has been submitted to FEMA. And there's something like 95 items on that list. Mm -hmm. It's valued about $11 million. So well, I can also tell you that I'm hoping I FEMA pumping the basement out, I could hear water spraying. What it did is it floated my hot water heater and broke the pipe. So I've got a half inch pipe spraying water still into the basement. I call public works because obviously I'm not wading through water this deep in a basement full of clutter to, to come shut it off to curb stop. Two days later, I waded through the water and shut it off myself. It's just pumping in, pumping in, pumping in more water. I couldn't even get them to come shut it off at the curb stop. Two days. And they wouldn't do any, uh, they said about the water bill, because it wasn't something like 85% more than the last year bill, they wouldn't do anything about that. And well, I can tell just... you that uh, we had another property owner who came in requesting an abatement for this very thing, the water charges during the time the pipe, water pipes were mm -hmm. broken in his basement and they were spraying water into his uh, house and we had someone else who came in requesting an abatement for that mm -hmm. and uh, and you have the ability to request that abatement, okay. abatement too thank you we don't thank have the figures with us or anything no right like i don't i don't have repair but, figures or anything like can, that with me but if you want to pursue that with us you can come in and file another request for abatement right, that. Thank you for that. now i've got a set of questions that i'm going over with all the uh, property owners so that we get the information we need to have to make a decision on these cases. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just go over them. Was there a 50% or greater loss of value to the primary structure on the property? I believe. You, you would say yes. Yes. Do you have any information, evidence that other, other than your estimate of how much it has cost? Not with me. Other than I, other than saying that we lost half our square footage plus all the appliances in the basement, was there a loss of use of the primary structure for sixty days or more? No. Okay. Was there a loss of access to utilities for sixty days or more? No. Was the property condemned? No. No. Um, any outbuildings suffered damage and. Any commercial use for any portion of the property? No. Okay. Um, Rosie. So you're you're maintaining that you had a fifty percent loss. Are you able to use the basement again, or have you? Are you not well, able to able use to it use? Anymore? As in, it's it's bare, bare. Now bare concrete. It, and you're you're just worried to use it again, or there's something I'm preventing. Not putting anything yeah. down there. Uh, makes <laughs> sense, but <laughs> no. Um, so like I say, I I feel we lost. Half of our square footage. Was that in the space before it was finished? Yes. Okay, all finished. Yes. Okay. Donna. Um, first, I, your cost. Do you have uh, some cost information you could send us? Absolutely. That would be helpful. I, I will tell you, got out of it rather cheaper, probably a lot cheaper than most because I That's just okay. did it myself. 
it just it, it help. I think it would help me anyway. Just to sure. Then what you have absolutely voices or this a list of them that absolutely. Just, so but, send that to John or the clerk. Sure. The, I, the city clerk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't hear it real well, so. Well, uh, Brian, I talked to you on the phone okay. about the culvert, oh, about okay. the Deaver bands. Yeah. And I actually did call DPW. Yeah. I got information we about the 1st of December, and they said there was some obstruction, which they cleared, but that the Beaver dams, they don't have control over. Right. But I would like your email, because I can send you the, that information direct if oh, you don't have it. Okay. Maybe I, I can see I you afterwards stuff. and just sure. give you more detail that maybe you don't remember. Sure, okay. sure. Good, good, good. Any other questions, Bob? Yeah. Was that a finished area in the basement? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you had furniture and wall, and furniture, walls, pellet stove, yeah, insulation, sheetrock. Yep. And all that's repaired or gone? No, it's gone. There, there was part of it was uh, the glue down squares yeah. i didn't i haven't peeled those up i just left them the rest is bare concrete brian question uh, was it only only 50 percent of it was finished like the only half of the basement yes okay. any other questions well 50 percent of it was finished as in living space yeah but then there was the utility room yeah Okay. You know, all it, it wasn't like you would be sitting in there, but it was sure. it was functional. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rose. Uh, was there mold? Yes, there was mold. Is that is, is there still mold? Is that uh, no? I took care of it myself. Actually, if you want to recommend anything to anybody, there's this stuff called shock wave concentrate. Comes by the gallon. It is fantastic. Non toxic. And it works. Spray it with a vegetable with a, and it it really did it. Good to know. Thanks. Yep. It's called shockwave. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I had to do it myself. We couldn't yep. afford to just buy it all. Okay. So as I've said to the other uh, taxpayers, we'll be discussing your case and all the others at the end, and then we'll get a decision to you. Right. Thanks for coming. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, if I could just maybe just give me your number. Okay. Uh, at the end of the process, not the end of the meeting. <laughs> right. In case there. Yeah. Lisa is in my view. Now, I, I always say that when people come to a city council meeting because they're interested in one particular thing, they sit and listen to the uh, other items on the agenda, and very often they're interested in that stuff too. And you're an example of that. So, as you raise your right hand, you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're allowed to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, why don't you introduce yourself again, because this is a separate meeting, and uh, and tell us what your story is. I'm Lisa Itzeniva. I live next door to Ed on State Street. Um, I always sort of start in Montpelier with saying that I'm a printer Edson and not a pharmacy Edson. We've been here since about the dawn of time. We have more relatives in the, in the cemetery down the street than there are people alive in Montpelier. Um, this whole thing has been awful. I purchased my house in 2017. I bought homeowner's insurance. I bought flood insurance. I did all the things I was supposed to do. We flooded in July, and our first floor on State Street had never been hit since 1927. It was not hit during Irene. It was The basement was hit six months before Irene, which was way before I owned the house, and they remediated. They lifted the utilities. They lifted the power. They did the things they were supposed to do. So unlike a lot of my neighbors, even though the flood water came to my countertops while I stood there, we retained power. We retained heat until they all had to rip it out when they had to rip out when we, I mean, I don't know who they is, when we had to rip everything out of the house. We ripped out seven layers of floor that had been put down since 1870. 
we ended up having to rip the seat the walls all the way to the ceiling. We ripped to the four foot mark, just like we were told by the insurance company, and the walls seeped and the insulation dropped out in big wet clumps. And we watched the mold. Over months, we ripped everything out. Actually, over weeks, we ripped everything out. Over months, we tried to dry it out. Like others, our electric bills were in the 500s running the dehumidifiers because this summer, as you all know, it was so humid. We had to close the windows to remove the humidity from the house. Unlike the others, my children and I, we live in the house. We have the whole time. We haven't had a choice. We pay almost $2,000 a month in mortgage and flood insurance and taxes. Less than half of that is our mortgage. It's the flood insurance and the taxes. We have not received help from FEMA. In theory, in theory, we're gonna receive a little more than half of what we paid for in insurance. They haven't paid us yet. We don't have the money. We're living there with no walls, no kitchen, no first floor bathroom, no ceilings in half the house. We did the work ourselves. We ended up putting in 40,000 and like, I, I mean, I'm so conservative on this stuff. I actually had, I'm a single income household. We had emergency funds and we drained every single one of them to nothing to make the house so that it wasn't toxic because we had nowhere else to go. FEMA didn't help us, the city didn't help us, the trailers didn't come, nothing happened. So unlike others, we've lived in the house the whole time. We're living there now. If you drive by, we're the big white house with the purple lights. We're the ones that are always on the porch and we look insane. The reason we look crazy is we don't have a kitchen. I've been cooking on the grill for eight months. We have nothing. And I'm asking for total abatement. I'm hoping that we can be seen just like the other households that have been seen as substantially damaged, even though we're living there, because we can't move forward. Even today, and I'm disappointed that, Wolf, that Bill Frazier isn't here. He was on the emails. I'm constantly trying to figure out how to move it forward, how to clean stuff out, how to remediate it, how to lift it. And we're being stopped by the city and by the, by the state we're not allowed to move forward. And so while we're asked to live in this level of horror, one would hope that we wouldn't be also be asked to pay full taxes on it because this is really wrong. We can't live somewhere else. We're in almost $2,000 a month in where we live and there is no support. Where was I supposed to move my kids? Where were we supposed to live? And the, the most bizarre thing, it was only about two weeks ago that I found out that we are only five households. All along, I su assumed there was a bigger we. I couldn't figure out why people weren't more upset, how people were living. And it turned out we were alone. So in terms of your questions, yes, we're beyond 50%. And I can state that because we received the letter from the city saying, raise your raise your 1870s house, a minimum of seven feet or tear it down. And I know it doesn't say the seven feet, it says above the base flood line. But what I can tell you is having talked to them, we're looking at seven to 10 feet to raise our entire house or we knock it down. And because we bought in 2017, if we have to knock it down, we lose everything, absolutely everything. Thank God the bank will be made hold, but we will be homeless and we will have nothing. And that's where we are. And we live with this every single day while everybody says it takes time. Well, it's been eight months. I don't even have insurance money. I don't have a kitchen. I don't have a bathroom. This sucks. And it feels really, really unjust. So we're more than 50%. I'll, I'll go over the questions. Yeah. More than more than fifty percent loss of value. Um. Yes, we have been living there as best we can. Again, we have no walls. We have no ceilings. We have no kitchen. Forty thousand dollars out of my pocket. Later, we are dry, and we have insulation and we have heat roughed in. Not more than that. So we're nice and warm, but we have nothing. And it's it's really impressive to see. I'm sorry that none of the folks that have walked through are here tonight. I've seen it and you put the floors 
we have subfloors. Yeah. We don't have floor floors, but no, subfloors are a off. godsend. We no longer have to be. We don't have to go across the the Stand. the joists, yeah. which yeah. And I'm really too heavy to go across one of those two by tens. It's not good. Um, so we have been living there the whole time, but in a really questionable level. Um, our utilities stayed running, and I'm one of the biggest ones saying, for goodness sake, if you can raise your stuff, raise it. Our our heat and our hot water lasted through it. We just have nothing else left. Our whole first floor is gone and is still gone right now, and we live there. Um, and in terms of commercial, well, I counted on the income from a two-bedroom apartment, and we've lost it completely. So we've lost all of our income on that as well. And at this point, I can't correct it because I'm waiting for all the decisions from the city and the state. And so that's the worst part. I can't even fix it myself. And we have to live with it every day because where else do we go? And this property has is one of those that has been determined to be substantially damaged. Yes, it is. We have to raise the entire thing or we have to demolish it. Okay. And then we have nothing. And we had insurance. And of all, and the thing that keeps driving me crazy is every one of us, I bet, in this room has car insurance. And if your car were totaled tonight, whether you did it and ran into the moose, and I know you did it and ran into the moose, but if you had an accident with the moose, if you went off the road, if someone stole it from you, you would go through the process, and a few months later, someone would give you a check to replace it. We pay thousands of dollars a month actually thousands a month a year for this insurance. And now that I call on it, it pays less than half. How is this right? And so all these calls on if only people had flood insurance, I'm the example. I have national flood insurance. I paid for everything I'm supposed to pay for. And we've got, in theory, we will get a little more than half. It's been eight months. I called again today. They're working on it. I need to be patient. I'm really over it. I've become a bitter, horrible harpy. I find myself saying things that I can't believe I've said because I cannot believe we are living like this and that there aren't answers and that I'm not even allowed to fix it myself. I'm told that I cannot and that I have to wait. I'm sick of waiting. I'm tired of living like this. It's awful. I miss Ed living next door. Yeah, Ed's gone. His place is boarded up. Mary's gone. Her place is boarded up. You'll hear from her next week. Katie's place is boarded up. The only places that are open are the apartment buildings, which have been able to rebuild exactly the way they are, but God help them when the next flood comes. Okay. Do we have any questions? Uh, uh, yes. I mean, uh, when I went to your house, and you go up the steps where your porch is. I can't remember if you have windows in your basement, but you really lost your basement. You lost your first floor. So you you really, two thirds of your house is gone. Yeah, and I, I put a grain of salt on the basement because after the flood before Irene, the basement was emptied and there was a very, there was a really good thought put for it. We had nothing in it, no utilities. We stored nothing in it. Even though our house has no storage, we were really true to that. There's nothing in it, but it had never filled before. And so, yeah, we have we had done all the things. When I bought the house, it was because it was remediated and I knew it hadn't been touched in Irene. I knew the floor, first floor hadn't been hit since 27. And that stuff in theory worked, but there was so much damage this time that even though the heating system itself still worked, we had to remove all the delivery units. And that's what we then had to rough back in because as October came and there weren't solutions, I mean, it, it, we were offered tra trailers in like Cambridge, but how, how do I bring my kids to Montpelier if we're in Cambridge? I was just trying to get to, you know, the loss. The loss, our whole first, so our first floor was all of our living. It was our kitchen, our first floor bathroom, our family room, our parlor, our dining room. It's all first floor because the second floor is split between three bedrooms and a very small 1870s bath. And the rest of the first, the second floor is the apartment. But the apartment isn't usable because the whole entry to it is gone. And when you walk in the apartment door, you're standing in what was once our family room because there are no walls. 
No, we, thank goodness. We were in between a tenant in tenants at that point. My other question was when you talked about the, the city saying you can't do something, are those letters that Michael Miller writes on behalf of the FEMA rules? Or is that something about the city rules that I'm not well, aware of? It becomes really complicated in terms of the funding and all the other pieces that go into it. We've been waiting a long time for final decisions on the FEMA levels in terms of what's the base flood level, what do we need to, to build above. Then we've been waiting on whether there is or isn't going to be money to assist us in raising the houses because none of that is covered by insurance. But the biggest thing is until there are some solid decisions made on what can and can't happen, it was about a month ago that that I had this horrible moment when I thought what had been told to us was that there was a real possibility we were not going to be allowed to rebuild at all. Because what was said was that there are parts of Vermont that based on the mapping will not be allowed to be rebuilt. But for a while that wasn't clarified. And so we really wondered whether we were that part of the section. Um, so there have been a lot of, and, and today I was asking about surveys and that whole area, if it's gonna be bought out and leveled and all these things, the city's gonna have to pay for those surveys. But what I was told is that they're not ready to move forward on any of it. So trying to decide what we are allowed to do and aren't allowed to do, my intention, I know this is gonna sound nuts, but there's a lot more research than this than it sounds like. My intention is actually to raise the structure. I'm gonna raise it, my intention is to raise it above the amount they say and make it flood proof and make it something that is sustainable going forward. Um, it's a really big question to do it. We're going to have to really truncate the house. We're going to have to add another apartment. There's no way in heck we can afford a second mortgage. So we're trying to do all sorts of things to figure out how do we fund this if it's only us. But our other option is losing everything. Uh, when was the last time you found a tenant in that apartment? Uh, the tenant moved out... I can't remember whether it was mid-May. It was it was really quite recently between when um 1300 a month at that point and I'll be straight up we were moving it to an Airbnb. So while there's all this pressure against the Airbnbs with the increases in taxes and two oncoming college educations, my intention was to have my sons flipping an Airbnb for money. And yes, we had every intention of switching this to an Airbnb. We can't afford the way things are going with the increases. And so, yes, that's why when the when the lease ended, I I worked to my my tenants knew three months in advance that we weren't going to extend the lease because we were going to switch the rental. And so that was part of my sensitivity. And I recognize we're three or less units, and I live in one, so I'd be exempt from what they were talking about earlier. But it always worries me when we we keep putting controls on landlords. Oh yeah, I talked to them. I, yeah, I mean, my last two tenants, I extended it month by month while they were buying houses. I'm I love our tenants. We've had great ones. Um, yeah, we communicated all of that. It was all good to go. They were long gone before the flood happened. Um, and actually, they came back to help us clean up. Uh, <clears throat> what portion of the second floor is usable? The second floor wasn't impacted by floodwaters, but recognize everything carried up there and everything is on the first floor. Our kitchen, our everything, what we have on the second floor are bedrooms. And so, yeah, we're living in those bedrooms and they aren't impacted, but not having a kitchen or bathrooms or a living room or floors or walls matters. Thanks. But, but to zero in on that a little more, the area of the building that was an apartment and in your plan is an Airbnb. Do you know what the square footage of that area is? About a thousand square feet. Okay. Out of the total building, whatever that yeah. is. Okay. Great. And that wasn't usable because the entryway to it was on the first floor. Yeah. And the foundation is badly damaged in the back. We weren't just flooded from the river. We were flooded from the hillside. And so there's damage, substantial damage to the foundation in the rear of the house as well. So without that being 
evaluated by the structural engineer, which we've only been waiting, you know, seven months on. That's what we're waiting on with the insurance company. I don't dare. I mean, how could I, even if I, I made it so that they could get up there, what if the back of the house dropped? I mean, and the, the damage is, I mean, you can see where it's folded under. So it's significant. To just help me understand that a little bit. Um, the the apartment foundation is damaged, but the foundation for the bedrooms is not. I, no, I don't. What you have to understand is that the house you have the farmhouse, which mm -hmm. was the original front of the structure. Okay. And so think of it as two rectangles. You have the front farmhouse, which has a basement under it. The back of the house was the barn. It okay. does not have a full foundation. It's a, a stone foundation from the 1870s, and there's no basement under. When the water hit from the back, it folded the back of the house under. And although we've done our best to stabilize it, and I've had a contractor come in and put up temporary things, because the very back of the first floor is our utility room, because that's where when all the utilities were moved from the basement, everything was moved to the first floor in that back room and raised on big pedestals. But because of how hard it hit the back of the house, it folded that foundation. And so the rear wall of the house is questionable. We've put up temporary supports on it. But again, we're waiting on all of this stuff because if we're raising the house, we'd be fools to deal with the foundation. If we're raising the house, meaning knock it down, we're also fools to deal with the foundation. So trying to rent it light right now, I could not do it in with good conscience. That's why we're not living in it. That's why we're not living in the apartment either. I think it's really questionable. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you. Okay. As I'm I sorry said, you're all here this late. We we will be taking up all of these requests at the end of the entire process. So you'll be getting it here. You're getting a decision from us end of the month, probably. That's our that's our hope. I thanks. It. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Which stream? All right. That is the end, and we can uh, get some news. Yeah. <laughs> John, you're up. Um, so you all know, uh, this process is still moving. I think we all need a break. Um, it's also with trickle, so it's awfully hard now to plan meetings when we don't know if we're going to have one or two or three or zero. Um, we're also up against, so what I had been recommending was let's start scheduling these out again after the one on the 15th and we've got next week and then we got the 15th, but we're going to have to come back and do more. This process could go on. I don't talking this with, uh, Sarah LaCroix and we're just like, we don't know when, how long it's going to go. But the idea of coming together and starting to, to hear cases again on the March 28th, so we all get a break. We get a break around town meeting day, and then the 28th, the 4th. Um, I'm thinking that if we get more, we could probably fit them both into those two days and then have a third meeting the next week on the 11th to decide because one of the, the details in the bill is decisions have to be made by April 15th. So if we meet on the 11th, then we're good. Now, this could change if we suddenly get a flood of, of uh, <laughs> if we suddenly get a, a, a an avalanche uh, of, uh, of more requests. And we could, because all the uh, uh, disparate heat bills went out, and a lot of people you heard from the representative for Mr. Malone. A lot of folks are upset about having to pay all of that. So Sarah says she's directing all those to abatement. Now those ones wouldn't, that's that's a utility, so it's not real estate, so it wouldn't fall into the bill, so we could push them off further. But just so you know, there's that coming potentially too. So we're looking at a never ending process here. Um, uh, I have a general question. Will all these properties be reappraised in April? That is something um, some people are of the mind where you don't do it unless they ask. I'm going to proactively go to the folks 
and adjust these. So I'm going to adjust as many of them as I can. So um, there's an April 15th deadline for us to act on the flood ones. So far, we've only heard abatements for the first two quarters. Would that deadline also apply to any abatements for the third and fourth quarters? I think it probably would. I'll have to ask. So it feels like maybe we should ask folks who we've already heard to tell us if they're asking for third and fourth, too. Even sort of assumptively expanding at least the third. I don't know. I mean, especially if, to be frank, if the state is paying for it, we want to give people all the relief that we can give them. Yep. Um, and so I want to make sure that we don't miss the deadline to do that or make it harder for people. So we'll need to know what the status of those buildings is for those second quarter, second and or third and fourth quarters, right? Which would be January through March and April through, I mean, it seems odd to have an April 15th deadline to figure out if we're abating for April through July, which it's, hasn't happened yet. Not it's sure. screwy. It's not a good thing. Well, we'll have to analyze the legislation, I guess. Would the state pay for it proactively um, for the next quarters? That's a good question, too. I don't know. Bill is brand new. It's just kind of skimpy from just at a glance. Um, I think that probably is going to be one of those questions that the tax department will take on because they're the ones who are going to be tasked with implementing it. And there was some concern about Irene, some of the frustrations that were there were how it was implemented by the tax department, that they were kind of stingy. Um, and so uh, we may be facing something like that again. We probably will, based on history, I'll probably be reduced to that. So, Would you be able to proactively reach out to people and find out the estimated date if they are estimated to be returning to full use of their properties by July 1st? Um, and then we'd at least have that information on hand. Yeah, right. we'll just send that to everyone. We know the ones that are substantially but, damaged. Right, maybe for the substantial damage ones, we kind of... We think about yeah one category for, for the other people we already know that a good number of them are already some of them be using the, the property but it would be yeah. good to find out for all, all the others you know it's one tax bill surely we can abate the whole thing if we wanted to and still be subject to the same it's not like it's four different bills it's one bill yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. Depends how the right on. how the state bill reads, though. Yeah, the state bill doesn't. If read the, the state re only reads about like oh, okay. first second quarter. I'll check on that, but I'm I'm feeling a little stupid now. Of course, it's one tax bill, so we could we could debate any part or in whole, and they're going to be receptive to that, I'm sure. But I, I just don't want to. We we set people up to ask us just for the first just quarter, first so I want to make sure that we're we taking care of the others, the request yes. for the others, and and make those. Um, okay. Decisions so before April fifteenth. Well, obviously. <laughs> well, I know two weeks another tax payment. And yeah. our last hearing, the last people on the list we have right now is next week. And I mean, my question is: Is there a way we can turn this around and at least give those folks that peace of mind and relief that they'll know February fifteenth that they don't have another tax payment? Yeah, February fifteenth. Uh, remember, we've got another meeting. Um, and that's got a few hearings on it too, but that's when we're supposedly set to decide all of these on February 15th. Which is the yeah. tax due date. Which is the tax due date. Yeah. And of course, we I'm can't do it on the 14th because oh, we've got a council meeting that night. Can't do it earlier. Uh, excuse me, you have a just, comment? It's, it just as an FYI, as you know, when I was in Barry on Tuesday, what the Barry City Council said was that for tax abatement, they weren't going to be able to abate the first 10 days. And they were saying that something about the tax rules, because the flood didn't happen for 10 days, all of their members were going to have to pay 10 days worth of taxes, and then they could abate the rest of it. I have no idea about the value of that, but just for consistency's sake, it was interesting hearing that. Mm -hmm. For any of us that are substantially damaged, whether we are demolishing our houses or raising them, there's not a prayer on the planet any of that's happening before July. Yep. 
no matter what we want to do. I just have a quick um, yes or no. Have you thought about how the homestead tax payment works? Essentially, I got a, a rebate. That money is mine, but the city got it. Think about it. Thank you. So the, one of the reasons we wanted to hold on everybody and treat them all the same at the same time was that we wanted to be fair. But in listening to this tonight, I was thinking about how the substantially damaged ones the different category. Yeah. yeah. And and so there's there's this category of well, like how much of your basement was flooded. And I think we definitely want to take all those together and, and figure those out together. For the substantial damage, I'm almost inclined to go ahead and just say any of those we would hundred percent abate and year. just do it. The whole year. Yeah. And for the whole year and so you're mm -hmm. saying we'd abate taxes on the land too. Yes. Not yes. Not just the yes. building is very so well, yeah, that's well. Um, to and I, I would feel comfortable doing that because it was not a lot of properties. And my assumption is that all of that will be covered by the state. Although your point about the land maybe is maybe the land piece is not covered by the state. <laughs> I think we should hold off on making that motion and find out about that. Okay. That's a great intention. But yeah. no, <laughs> what we're yeah, thinking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's just just it. And how many others substantially damaged have, have been here ap applied for abatement? That term. So but that we should know that next week. We should yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we've got some homework. All right. Yeah, Sorry, John. Sure I have it all. Okay. okay. I think we're good to go. So we can adjourn as a, sorry, as of 8.17 p.m. Thank you all.